If you've ever been to Huntsville, Alabama, you may have heard the name Werner Von Braun. Werner Von Braun was an early supporter of the space program and the man who created the rocket that sent men to the moon, and he did it all in Huntsville. And that's a big deal. Such a big deal that it makes you wonder why you don't really hear about Von Braun very much. Why don't people talk about Von Braun with the same reverence as they talk about Neil Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin? Well, it's probably because Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin didn't used to be card-carrying, uniform-wearing Nazis. Was Werner Von Braun really a Nazi? That question was submitted to Ask Alabama by Tyler Hamlin. And yep, Tyler, he really was. There's not really any debate on that. He was registered with the Nazi party, seen in pictures with Hitler, and Von Braun himself never disputed it. So maybe a better question would be, why was a Nazi allowed to work on the American space program to begin with? And that's a little more complicated. See, Von Braun headed up the Nazis' rocket team during World War II and designed the V-2 rocket, the world's first long-range ballistic missile. But as the war was winding down in Germany, the U.S. faced a problem. See, the Nazis had cultivated a side science and engineering force, and with the war in Europe over, U.S. tensions with the Soviets were rising. If the U.S. didn't seize on that force quickly, the Soviets would. So the U.S. started Operation Paperclip. It's not the best name. It was a list of Nazi scientists and engineers that were to be brought over to work for the U.S. Army. At the top of that list, the head of the Nazi rocket team, Werner Von Braun. Von Braun and members of his team were brought to America to design and build rockets for the U.S. Army in 1945. He was shifted from place to place for a few years, but ultimately was sent to Redstone Arsenal in Huntsville, Alabama. He spent 15 years working for the Army, but had never been quiet about the fact that the whole reason he got into the rocket game to begin with was for space travel. And in 1960, he got his chance to shoot for the stars. The space race was on with the Soviets, and to win, the U.S. was going to need someone who knew a thing or two about rockets. And nobody was better at that than Von Braun. So in 1960, his team was assigned to the newly formed National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA. While he was working for NASA, he developed the Saturn V rocket, the rocket that was used to send Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the moon. Lift off on Apollo 11. So that's how Von Braun, a former Nazi, landed in Huntsville. Now, while I did say that it's not up for debate whether Von Braun was a Nazi, what historians do debate is to what extent he was on board with the whole Nazi ideology. A lot of people contend that Von Braun was just a German guy that only ever wanted to build rockets to go to space. But when the Nazis came to power in Germany, his choice was either build rockets for the Nazis or die. But... That sort of forgets the fact that those V-2 rockets he built were built by slave labor from concentration camps and thousands of people died during the production. And Von Braun knew that. For sure he knew that. He saw it and he didn't stop it. Now some have argued he didn't really have the power to stop it and even if he tried he might have ended up being one of those workers dying building rockets. That's why despite his accomplishments for the U.S., Von Braun's legacy isn't really celebrated in the same way that other pioneers of space travel have been. I'm Jonathan Sobolewski for Reckon. If you like these videos, you can go to the ReckonByAL.com Facebook page where you can find a lot of videos and stories on history and news. And be sure to like the page before all our likes get used up. It helps us share these videos with even more people. Thanks.